The government is overwhelmed by the thousands of migrants at our southern border. Border Patrol is set to officially announce this week a staggering number of apprehensions for the month of February, more than 100,000. That's up almost 30 percent from January. It's gotten so bad, DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is now begging employees via email to help volunteer and, quote, provide needed humanitarian support along the southwest border and relief for our CBP colleagues. That call for backup is a far cry from the administration's long-held stance that there's no immigration crisis. The men and women of the Department of Homeland Security are working around the clock seven days a week to ensure that we do not have a crisis at the border. Is there a crisis at the border, sir? At this point, is this a crisis at the border? Look, I don't think we need to sit here and put new labels on what we have already conveyed is challenging. Joining me now, Republican Senator from Louisiana, John Kennedy. Senator, how are you? I'm well, Trey. What in the heck's going on down at the southern border? Seems pretty predictable. In my judgment, Trey, this is a, a, a prime example of why so many Americans think there's no intelligent life in Washington. One need not be clairvoyant to have seen this coming. I mean, what did President Biden think was going to happen? What did my Democratic friends in Congress think was going to happen? For four years, they fought the Trump administration like a bunch of myrmidons in its efforts to, sec to uh, secure the border. Um, President Biden's and his Democratic colleagues' mantra was, uh, you're all a bunch of racists. Enforcing the immigration laws is racist. Vetting people at the border is racist. I can tell you what the message to the world was from President Biden and the Democratic Party. We believe in open borders. That's certainly the message that the people of Central, Amer Central America heard. That's what the smugglers and the coyotes and the drug dealers heard. And so here they are. And they're going to keep coming. And they're not going to stop. And President Biden has a decision to make. He's either going to enforce America's immigration laws and, the de and devote the resources to do so, or he isn't. Now, I, if, he, if he listens to the American people, Trey, I think I know what they will tell him. The American people are not anti-immigrant. I'm certainly not. The American people support legal immigration. I certainly do. Uh, America invites over a million of our world's neighbors every year to, legally to become American citizens. I support that, and I'm flattered by it. Uh, as I've said before, when's the last time you heard of somebody trying to sneak into China? other than from North Korea. People want to come here. But, but that's legal immigration. American people also believe that illegal immigration is illegal. Duh! And they don't think that vetting people at the border is racist. They think it's prudent. So President Biden's got a decision to make, and we do have a crisis. It's not a challenge. It's, uh, it's not a problem. It's not a bump in the road. It is a full-blown crisis that he can solve if, A, he's willing to follow the rule of law and enforce America's immigration laws, and, B, he's willing to devote the resources to do so. And I can tell you that Congress will commit those resources if he's willing. Senator, I, I'm one of those nerds that actually watched Merrick Garland's uh, confirmation hearing on mm -hmm. the uh, Judiciary Committee. I thought it was very civil. Uh, got a little bit of time left. Let me ask you, it seems like the path may be a little rockier for some of the other senior DOJ officials not named Judge Garland. Is that fair? Yes. And, and let me tell you what I've noticed. I, I don't want to talk specifically about one nomination, but there seem to be two main characteristics to serve in President Biden's cabinet. Number one, you've got to worship at the altar of climate change. Uh, you, you, the people that he's nominated don't see climate change as a discrete scientific problem. 
They see it as a religion. And number two, it, it, it appears that at least most, if not all, of his nominees are obsessed with race and gender and sexuality. Um, and I think many of them think America is wicked. It was wicked in its origins. It's more wicked today that most Americans are racist. Most Americans are misogynistic, most Americans are sexist, and most Americans are homophobic. And that's not the America that I live in. And uh, I I'm afraid that where this is going to lead, I hope I'm wrong, uh, is quotas, which are illegal, which are unconstitutional, and which will make a mock mockery of the American dream. Well, Senator Kennedy, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. We'll be watching, I at least will be watching the other confirmation hearings and watching you on the Judiciary Committee. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Trey.